question. Who's the greatest Auburn alumni not named Rowdy Games? I'll give you Tim Cook, Apple CEO, Bo Jackson, Charles Barkley, the round mound to rebound, Jimmy Wales, the co-founder of Wikipedia, or Octavia Spencer, Oscar-winning actor? B. Uh, Jackson. Yeah, Bo Jackson, for sure. I'm going to have to go Tim Cook. I'm going to have to go Tim Cook. Welcome to Social Kick. I'm Brian Lundquist. We got a solo outing tonight, but had it on the heels of SECs. Had to get the Auburn boys in here. Aiden Stoffel, Nate Stoffel, the Stoffel brothers. Good, What's going on, guys? How are you? Pretty good. How are you? I yeah. mean, as an alum, stoked. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah. pumped to see uh, and uh, hear about your uh, SECs and uh, a really killer second place finish and a hard fought, long week of racing. All the way down to the last session uh those are the most draining kinds but uh you know i want to hear from each of you maybe aiden first as your uh well probably third secs no you did have secs the canceled year right so yeah. uh and then no ncs but um what's what's your reaction on the heels of this performance aiden yeah uh it was first of all it was awesome i mean um i think Finishing second place was the goal that we've had in mind, you know, since the beginning of the season. Um, and while it was far from perfect for a lot of reasons, you know, there were a lot of like, we had a lot of guys finish like ninth or uh, 17th instead of, you know, 16th or, or, um, or eighth. Uh, you know, we put together a really good meet as a team and uh, it was awesome to see. We had a lot of momentum. Um, there were a lot of guys that stepped up that, you know, might not have been the top of their event, but they were, they were scoring a lot of points for us. So it was a great meet. It was awesome. And um, yeah, there's, I mean, I'm Kim was say more than much, much more than that, but it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. What was your reaction, Nate? Um, I, I pretty much the exact same thing. Like you said that our goal coming in the season was to get second at SECs. Um, we fully bought into that and we knew it was going to be tough. Like we knew it was going to be like, we had to be firing. Um, but uh, uh, it ended up being, like you said, not a perfect meet. Um, but we, we, at the end of the day, we got what we wanted to do done. Um, as a comparison to like last year, uh, like at the end of the meet, we were like semi disappointed with our like our uh, like official placing, and um, compared to our reactions and our like the general energy around this year compared to last year's, kind of night and day. Um, just really like uh, uh, figuring out that like we got our goal and now we can keep moving forward. And it's, it was more a sign of like the work that we had put in, if anything. So it was, it was definitely um, a, a light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. Yeah. What well, <clears throat> since you mentioned, you know, the, the moving forward, what, how, how are you and the team, Nate, thinking about NCs now? Uh, yeah. on the heels of some some good momentum yeah um well our, our goal at the origin at the beginning of the season and i mean as far as it is now as well is to get top 15 there um i think per like personally i think we're gonna do that and much more um we've got a lot of guys that are are going and a lot of guys that can score and a lot of guys that are right in the bubble um and most of all like our relays are looking really solid right now um you know, that we're just trying to ride the momentum that we had or that we have right now after SECs into NCAAs and kind of end the season on a really high note. And so that gives us just a bunch of stuff to look forward to with next season. And that that's where we can really make the strides in, you know, top 10 at NCAAs, um, fighting Florida for an SEC title and, and, and so forth. But yeah. Yeah. Do you, well, a lot of magic in the Minneapolis pool from a from an Auburn history standpoint, I must say. Uh, the team's first men's title came in Minneapolis. Uh, I was part of two titles, one in, in Minneapolis. Fred Biscay was the first man under 19 seconds in Minneapolis. Uh, I don't remember. No, Caesar went 18-6 there, but not 18-4. A lot, a lot of magic there. Um, and I think really exciting to just think about um, approaching that meet with intent to be in the conversation and i'm curious aiden like what if that has been a mind shift you know for you guys because as, as you climb up the scale 
having finished 29th last year, you know, it's almost like the numbers don't matter at that point because, you know, you score five more points, get one more swim and you move up three spots sort of thing. <laughs> like, you know, it's so few. Um, but to be talking about like, you know, as Nate mentioned, the consistency of the relays to have more of a complete picture on the roster and to also besides just the good swimming performances to have that confidence building as, as a program, um, what's it like Aiden for, for the, for the team and, and all of your mental approach, given all those things as you head into NCs? Yeah, definitely. I think number one, I mean, uh, Nate mentioned like momentum and just like having momentum in the world of swimming is, is a really big thing to do and big thing to have. And, um, like you said, like we've got more guys going this year. We already had more guys, um, qualify it at, uh, at SECs and we've got more on the way that'll definitely qualify last chance. I think just having, you know, dudes come with us that we know are going to show up is like, is big, but I definitely think like, like as a senior, like just watching the shift over the last four years of like, you know, scoring zero points two years ago, um, to then putting at least some points on the board and, you know, showing the world that like we can do this and you know it's not perfect right now but it's we're common and i think really after like this is the first year we've been able to like check off a big end of season goal and like just being able to like say we did that and we did it you know pretty handily and you know it's definitely a lot there's, there's a lot of confidence going into this meet and you know we know what we're capable of um i think a lot of people are, are running us off but we know what we're capable of yeah, I wanted to spend a, a few minutes focused just on what went down, you know, last week with SECs, of course, being uh, continuing to grow in terms of how how long the meet is. I mean, these five day meets, it's it's kind of a, a good and a bad thing. It prepares you well for international competition and saves saves uh, some energy without having so many races in a packed um, few days. But I'm sure it still seems packed. But five days of like being fully bought in to what your teammates are doing can be really emotionally draining um, besides just physically draining. But I kind of like, you know, you started off with, um, you know, third place in the medley relay. You guys both swam on it on Tuesday night. And then that eight free relay team to come back and beat Bama and get second of them for you guys to just to finish with those two. Dude, how big of a boost was, was that to see the performance from those boys? Dude, my voice was gone after the first night, which is <laughs> kind of a rarity, but, uh, yeah, no, that was really exciting. I mean, and honestly, like, that two medley relay was not where we, like, I, you know, there were a lot of mistakes. Like, there were, there was a lot of things that we have to clean up and, and stuff that we know we're going to focus on over the next, you know, four, four MCs. Um, but, yeah, watching that eight free relay was a lot of fun, you know, especially with, uh, you know, who it was that we ran down um, with it being Bama. But, yeah, that was a good relay. And, dude, our, our eight free relay has been talking, like, big game for like you know a long time now <laughs> to put that together and like you know really crush it was awesome they, good you know, school record and everything it was, it was awesome well good they should yeah um you know and then you guys it's it's interesting to see brothers who have a very similar skill set um and to watch the way that you guys are used in the relay lineups is almost kind of confusing too just given like <laughs> the flip-flopping of uh, you know, swimming flying back on the two medley and then switching for the four medley. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but you guys both had a big swims throughout the meet. Um, you know, Aiden, was that your first time getting under 140 in the two back, or had you been under before? No, that was my second time. Um, okay. my first time mid season, like my best time was from like freshman year, and they were like, Well, we don't want to put you in two back, and I had done like 140 too high, and they were like, We'll just put you in two back and see what you can do, and then I was like, 139.6 and so they're like all right you'll just do that so, <laughs> but I now was, you know I, being a, a 45 uh you know 45 backstroker and and you know 45 flyer and then nate getting that school record man on the four medley relay a th oh yeah 14 year old school record uh -huh. what was that moment like Oh man, I was I was I was pumped beyond belief. Like if you can you can talk to Aiden about this afterwards, but like I like I slapped the water. It was like yeah. Like after I finished it, I looked at him. Um, it, it was insane to 
I told him to enjoy it while it lasts. Cause <laughs> yeah, I said dream on. But, um, I mean, to break it by uh, a one one hundredth of all things, um, and that, that had been a record that I had been eyeing since I came in here. Um, and to do that on my third hundred back of the day, um, and, and in, like in a four medley relay that we thought we could really do some damage in, uh, man, I was, I was pumped. I was really pumped, uh, after that race. And I think, um, I think they gave us a, a, a lot of momentum or that the re the rest of the relay, a lot of momentum to see, um, okay. First leg did really well. Uh, Reed is dropping down some ridiculous split right now. Like we're in really good shape. Let's keep going. Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was a fantastic moment. Well, I know Aiden was pumped cause he was minus 0.01 on the takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. Dude, um, what was, what was the boss? What was the boss man's reaction to that takeoff? Uh, he didn't say anything to me about it at first, but I asked him after they, they said, uh, cause Bama DQ'd that relay and they were like, mm -hmm. they said like this, this event is going under further review. And I was like, Oh. Like I tell, I totally left early, but um, yeah, I mean, point one's negative point one's legal, so <laughs> hey, it's legal, we'll take it. Um, actually, that relay was lightning on all the takeoffs. I mean, to have point two nine as a total takeoff time for for a four medley relay, or honestly, even a two hundred relay, is really good. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, that's how that's how Florida's two free relay last year at NCs was. Or both of their two hundred relays were like really good relay starts, and the relay starts on that. We're nuts. I can't say the same for the four free relay though. Four free relay. <laughs> that's that's the bone to pick with the eight free relay guys because the yeah. eight free relay guys can talk some smacks. That four hundred free relay, yeah. point nine total takeoff time. I, listen, I know yeah. it's the last session, and uh, I, but you had a lightning two back. Uh, Nate, you still had a good two back, a little slower than the morning on the last session. It's a long meet, and then Aiden, you close out that relay. But man. You guys were eating sandwiches on the blocks. I go. <laughs> I I don't take any responsibility for that. After my two back at night, I was just like, you know what? Those guys got it. Yeah, you tapped <laughs> out. Yeah, that was uh, that was not our strongest relay of the of the meet. <laughs> on that one. Yeah, you know, uh, with with the emotional drain, it's it's easy to understand. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the rivalry a little bit? I'm curious. You know, you mentioned it was important to to beat Alabama. Um, you know, and a lot of people have seen documentaries on ESPN about what it's like in Auburn and Alabama. I remember being in a um, in a pep talk with a college with a classmate of mine who was from Montgomery. And the first day of our freshman year, he introduced himself to the whole team as John Scott from the cradle of the Confederacy, Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and he told the history and was kind of an ambassador for what that rivalry means in the state. And for you guys coming from growing up in Atlanta, you see Auburn stuff around. But I would imagine that when you move to the state of Alabama and you integrate into Auburn and you get to understand a little bit more through other sports and the community, what it means to compete with Alabama, um, especially with as good as their program has been. And, you know, in recent years, what Aiden, what's that like to compete against Bama? What does the rivalry mean? Yeah, uh, there's a feeling in the air like the week before the meet, like before Iron Bowl. Oh my God, like that is such a it's a it's a fun meet to be a part of for sure. And they're always uh, they're always little mind games going on. It's usually they're usually not our mind games. They're usually mind games from another team. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say anything. But I haven't lost to him yet. Um, <laughs> So, I would. I got, yeah, but uh, no, it's it's always like it's intense, like for sure. It's every win means something, and every loss means something. So it's 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 super intense. And you know, I have like I have a friend on the team that I grew up kind of swimming against on and off, and we were we were friends in high school. And he he actually was on my trip here. Um. And during the meet, we are not friends. But at the end of the meet, we're friends. But during the meet, like, we, like, we'll talk back. Like, it, we will go at it sometimes. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's it's intense for sure. It's, it's a fun rivalry to be a part of. And, um, yeah, I, I, 
I enjoy it. I, I love Iron Bowl. Iron Bowl is something to look forward to every year. Aiden, you've been around for, uh, you know, two different coaching staffs and, um, you know, my college teammate uh, is your head coach now, Ryan Walker Merka. And he was a guy who, when I was on the team, was someone who I looked up to. And I remember actually chasing uh, in practice some guys who were maybe between us in our, uh, you know, swimming accomplishments. Mm -hmm. And I remember, uh, you know, coaching staff saying, hey, you got you got to look to to Ryan and you also got to look to Fred Bousquet and what those guys are doing as as kind of the model to chase. Um, I'm I'm curious. Aiden to get into and this is true for both of you guys because um you know Nate you you live two years of your older brother swimming for a program and then may have had some expectations coming in and when you started those expectations um, maybe not expectations but at least like the dynamic and the the environment was was a different one than what Aiden had experienced the first couple of years so Aiden I'm curious from your point of view what what has um been so what are some of the biggest transitions and changes that have come about over the last two years from your first couple of years yeah um where to start uh well i think for one like watching like just the team itself over the course of um like the first two years versus the last two years it's been like it's kind of like looking back, it's insane. Like, like we tell stories all the time, like just of how crazy, like different the team is. Like the culture has changed so much, like so quickly. Um, and like, honestly, I like the group of guys that we have right now is like awesome. And I, I, um, I was watching Jake Foster say, no, not Jake. Oh, which one was yeah. It? I think it was Jake. Is it, yeah. It was Jake. Yeah. yeah. Talking about culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was saying like, he was saying like, oh, Texas has the best route, like best uh, uh, team culture, like in the NCAA. And I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're uh, like the group of guys and the culture that we have built is like it's awesome, and it's it's like we truly, you know, as much as like as hard as practices, like we actually enjoy coming and like enjoy competing with the guys that we compete with and swimming with the guys that we swim with and being coached by the people that we're coached by. And that's just been a huge shift, number one. But number two, I, I think, like, there's been a lot that's changed with, like, just different coaching staffs. Like, one, I mean, we've had Gideon um, all four years, which has been amazing, and I wouldn't change any part of that at all. But other than that, like, it's been a pretty – It's a, it's definitely – we've kind of seen like two different um, like staff approaches and to kind of see like what's worked and, and what hasn't like just to see the difference in um, in such a short period of time, like it's been amazing. And the, these coaches have done like a fantastic job, I think with like kind of like, taking like in a way taking their hands off of certain things and letting us figure them out like for ourselves it, it's really like helped our uh, helped us find our own identity i think hmm. and, i mean honestly like we have i think the best staff in the sec um they're the most knowledgeable they are the most supportive and it, it's just been it's been amazing really like well, seeing the shift like Auburn has kept Auburn itself has kept me here all four years and it's paid its dividends. Like it's been awesome. And the staff and the team that we have right now has been, it's unbelievable. I mean, and we see it in our progress. Like we see it in our practices. We see it at our meets. Like it's been, it's been awesome. That means a lot to want to go to work for the people that are helping you be better athletes, be better people. Uh, I can't understate how, how impactful that is. Yeah. Um, especially if, you know, f f if that's one of the components that may not always be a, a part of, you know, what you're doing, because the physical grind is incredibly difficult. Um, I can remember conversations that I had with upperclassmen early on in the fall of freshman year, where I didn't know that you were just supposed to be tired all the time. Like that was, that was normal. Right. And I was, having this feeling like oh it's me but it's a huge adjustment to get to compete at this level yeah. and 
um and, and the grind is huge so you need all the resources you know on your side and aligned um nate i'm curious what your uh what your first couple of years have have been like and um if there was anything that has uh maybe differed from expectations or even like what have been some of the most challenging moments that you've come across in two years yeah um it's definitely it was definitely an interesting portion or like about like a week from the time that we found out that the old staff was leaving and that we would be getting a completely new staff i like already signed my noi i had done all the paperwork i was accepted i was going and I was like, dang, I'm, I'm committed to four years under a coaching staff that I don't know. Um, and it was a little it was a little scary for me. Um, I didn't have any thoughts of like, you know, decommitting or going somewhere else because I knew that I loved Auburn and I knew that I wanted to go here for the school, regardless of who was coaching me. Um, but in terms of expectations, it. I don't think I really had any almost just because I didn't I didn't have um or I didn't have like people or sorry, sorry. No one on the team had like told me like, Oh, okay. This is what this, this new staff is like. Cause they hadn't experienced it. Like I hadn't, I didn't have any information. And so I was pretty much just going in blind. Like this is, I'll take it for what it is. I know what, um, you know, good coaching looks like for my club team um, to now. So like I'll, I'll know pretty quickly if I like this staff or not, but as soon as I got uh, to campus and got to talking with Ryan, Vlad, the whole staff, uh, I knew I was like, oh, we're fine. <laughs> I like I I really liked the old staff here, but I would have committed in the exact same amount of time and everything with the new staff um, if if I had been recruited under them. Um, in terms of like a culture shift, I've only really he like heard about it from the other guys on the team that have been here before me. Um, but from what they have been talking about, it's completely night and day. Um, of of the attitude and culture that uh, that has been fostered through the 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 bringing in of the new staff, um, and it was kind of like a um, it, I mean it very it very much was a reset, but it was a reset in term and and we got off on the the good uh, side of things. It wasn't like a started off rocky and kind of progressed on, but it just it just went from Ryan getting on campus to, you know, we're, we're gunning for it. We're going. Um, and you know, the next, the, the, the first two years of me being here, I, I would not change it for anything. I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't want anyone else to stay here with me or, 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 or anything along those lines. And so I, I, it's, it's been perfect in my book, really. I was talking to an alum, Kyle Darmody, and uh, mm -hmm. his older brother Kip swam at Texas, and he wanted to know from you guys what it's like to swim as brothers at the same school. He he said he didn't have that opportunity, and actually, I, I he mentioned that Kip did think that he was going to go to Texas, and that it didn't end up going that way. Aiden, was there ever a moment, especially with the staff change too, where you thought, "Oh man, Nate might actually not actually come here." <laughs> Well, I mean, it was kind of weird because, like, I hosted him and, like, the whole, like, recruiting my brother thing was, like, it was just, I don't know, it was kind of different. Like, I don't, I don't think most people get to, like, most people definitely don't get to do that. Yeah. Um, but as far as, like, did I think that he was going to, like, change commitment or anything like that? Nah, there's never, never really a worry. Um, and as far as, like, whether I wanted him to come here or not, like, I just wanted him to do whatever he wanted to do, really. And, and if that was, like... You know, if that was coming here, then I was all for it. And I think it's definitely it's been it's been a good thing for me. You know, how cool is it? How cool is it to watch him have success, though, and like break a school record? Uh, it kind of sucks when he does it. Before <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, it sucks when he does it before you, but it's good. I mean, no, nah, I'm, I'm glad he broke it. Um, and, you know, it's it's definitely like the best kind of motivation um, for me, like. My first, you know, it's part of, it's kind of coincidence, but like my first two years were really bad and like I didn't swim well at all. And then but like since he's been here, I've swam really well. And like, I'm not saying that it has nothing to do with it, but it has maybe a little bit to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, do you guys talk shit to each other? Do you get oh, each other? All the, time. all the time. Yeah. If like we're, cause 
Well, technically, we're in two different groups and like for um, for practices. So he's ironically in sprint group when he's a better two backstroker than I am. And I'm ironically in mid distance when I'm a better hunter backstroker than when he is. I don't understand. So it's, a, it's a weird dynamic. But um, like oftentimes we'll get like the same kind of sets where it's just like a bunch of like 50s, 100s, 75s fast, like all out max VO2 or something. And I'm constantly like trying to listen to see what he's going. And if I'm beating him, I'll get up in his face and be like, what's up? Like, I, I, I hear you came, like, you want to beat me and, and just talk a bunch of crap to him. Uh, and he does the exact same thing to me. If he's beating me on a, on a set, then, um, then he'll get up, he'll get up in, uh, on, like in my face and be like, like, come on, dude. I thought you were like a school record holder and, and, and so on. And, uh, it, it's definitely a, a big motivation factor for me because if I'm hurting during a set and I hear him talking uh, crap to me over on the other side of the pool, then you you know the next one I'm gonna be I'm gonna be kicking it in like as as hard as I can. Um, so it's yeah, we definitely we definitely talk to each other during practice a lot. Is there anybody on the team, including coaches, who could fire you guys up more than each other getting it, getting in each other's face? No. <laughs> No, because it only has to be verbal, really. Yeah, like even even I I don't have that like emotional like I need to beat him aspect with like anyone else on the team besides Aiden, just because like we've grown up together, we've competed in literally everything in our entire lives, and so like I'm I'm gunning for him, I want to beat him, and if I beat him, and it's a good day, and so uh, that's like that's kind of like what I uh, um, like what I get pushed by really and and you know everyone else on the team will push me definitely but it's it's definitely a different type of motivation with Aiden another uh, alum question was about team cohesiveness and what you guys do to foster that and Aiden you mentioned actually that there was freedom in the staff to kind of let you guys and, and gals kind of manage developing in that area, some on your own. Uh, <laughs> it made me actually think about Christmas training. We always used to have this, uh, this one night where everybody got in a circle and, you know, told stories about each other. And we used to call it cry time because uh, we knew people were going to cry. So we're just like, okay, well, what day is cry time? All right, this is it. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of other, a lot of uh, character building and um, cohesion building activities uh, outside of that. But what, what are some of the things that are moving you all in that direction, Aiden? Yeah, I mean, every year we do um, like a team retreat, which is kind of the uh, coach organized and like more formal part of like team building um but i mean what do you do from, where do you go Tell me yeah about it. uh so we go to camp chandler it's like a oh cool camp that's uh in alabama i couldn't tell you exactly where but it's like two hours away or so and we're there for um either like 18 hours ish or the year before we were there for a little bit longer but um they have like different we have basically what you just described like it's pretty much cry time like <laughs> kind of uh like sh like share stories and like and just stuff like that um and then just kind of like they have the the camp itself has like team building and like you know random like we like for one of them is like you get into a boat and you row around an island you have to like beat the other team so it's just like random stuff like that but i mean other than like the formal stuff like you know, like sometimes having a coaching staff have their hands off of, you know, letting, you know, the team kind of build their own identity might be a bad thing. But I think we have like such a great group of guys like that. It honestly, like our team building has kind of built itself. And like there's no one on the team that anyone like wishes wasn't on the team. And uh, it's just like you know, whether you're in classes together, like you're always sitting next to each other or whether you're, you know, it's Friday night and wellness is close and you like in a group of guys just go to Applebee's or like something random like that. Like <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, it's just all a bunch of little stuff that like, and it's not a, it's like, there are of course like roommate groups, but you're always hanging out with different people. Like it's it's not like they're you know individual small groups within like everyone likes everyone so 
Yeah, I'm sure you get this question sometimes of people who, um, you know, you don't know who ask you where you go to school. Oh, you're in college. Where you go to school? Oh, are you in a fraternity? And it's like, yeah, yeah. no, kind of. <laughs> but wait, kind of, right. like a kind of am, because <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of a do everything together environment. Speaking of team personalities, uh, I want to spend a little bit of time getting to know some of the other guys on the team if we can typecast them a little bit. So. Uh, first, who is the enforcer on the team? Um, uh, for Auburn alums, is the guy that used to come to mind is Derek Gibb, the guy who could get in your face, and he wasn't a captain, so it didn't matter like how hard he pushed you. There was nobody he had to answer to on the other side, really. Yeah. Who is there anybody who can um, get in someone's face and kind of do do the hard, have the hard conversations? I'm afraid yeah. it's, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it's probably it, it is Aiden. Yeah, he's the guy. <laughs> what's uh nate what's what's um have you ever had a have you had a moment since you've been at auburn where you've seen aiden get in somebody's face and you're like who um yeah. i i haven't had like a like oh man like i, I better stay away from him moment uh, i've i've had that with like some other guys but it's been kind of like isolated uh things but like he's he's more of like if we have a message that like we have to like send across, he's going to be the guy to like text the team. Hey, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it. And so on. And if someone is like, you know, acting up in practice or the locker room or something, he's going to be the guy to be like, all right, you know, this needs to stop. Like you need to cut this out or, 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 or whatever is happening pretty much. Um, but he's, I don't have to yell much, but yeah, no, <laughs> he's, he's, de he's definitely not a yeller. Like he's not someone that like anyone is like afraid of, but he's the guy that people like respect and be like, okay, he's right. Like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow him. Hmm. Nate, what do you think that is about him that gives him that platform? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I, I think it just has to do with personality really. Um, he like, hasn't had any really moments where everyone's just kind of like, Oh, you remember that time where Aiden really messed up and, and did this. It's just like, he has built this relationship of trust with all of the guys on the team and hasn't had a like point in time where he's like broken that really, or had like an incident where it's like, Oh, well, because he did this, I'm not really going to listen to him there um he's just he's very forceful he's he's a big like camaraderie guy like he'll like make fun of you and expect you to make fun of him back um it's it's just more of like a respect thing it's just like i respect you you respect me um uh, uh and this is like kind of like how it like works he's just, he's he's one of the guys but he's like kind of like a leader of the guys almost it's 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 i don't really know how to describe it any other way than that all right, who's the class clown? <laughs> Christian Stoltzman, baby. Oh, Always yeah. goofing off? Oh, yeah. yeah Aiden, Aiden, Aiden has experienced more of Christian than I have, so he can he can speak to that. He, uh, yeah, we call him Steez, but he's a character. He, like, he kind of, uh, he has his favorites to kind of, you know, mess with a little bit, but he will mess with anyone he like never he's always got an, ins an insane amount of energy yeah he embodies we have a couple guys that are like that but he's like he's way over the top he's the alpha <laughs> yeah. all right who's the most likely to start a billion dollar company Ooh. um honestly i would say fletcher no i would say Really, I kind of, I kind of think that that would like that would shock some people and it would come out of left field. But like you'd be like, yeah, well, that would make sense. Um, I bet I, I think like Seth, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, Seth Mashmeyer, he's in my grade. Um, he's a, he's super smart and he's uh he's kind of he's uh yeah he, he's, he's a maniac. Yeah, he like he he was the guy that if I had that I when I had homework, he's an accountant. He's an accounting major. Um, if I had accounting homework over the the uh, the week of SECs, I'd be like, dude, like I need some help on this. <laughs> and he would like he would come up to my room and help me with some uh, accounting stuff. And then he would help with like multiple people with the exact same project or or anything like that. He's he's the smart guy on the team. And I would yeah, he was one of the guys that I would most expect to be like, yeah, like if you're going to be a billionaire, it'd be him. Yeah. Hey, Nate, when you get further into that Excel program, then, uh, you know, look <laughs> further. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> who's the who's the most likely to be late to practice? There's a there's actually there's like two or three guys that you can choose from. I feel like here. Yeah. And what is and what is the penalty if you're late? So it, actually, this is kind of funny. It used to be that if you were late, it, it was a it was a it was a very bad thing. But uh, this new staff has kind of been like, I kind of like their approach because like if there's one thing that like really sucks, it's like waking up and seeing your phone and it's like seven thirty and you're like, oh my god, I just overslept. It's because like they know that like we're putting enough pressure on ourselves to get there in time that when it doesn't happen, like we feel it ourselves. So they're not going to like scream at you unless it's like more than once. So if it's like more than once, then it's like a, you know, it starts, you know, it'll be a problem, but there was a, there was a time last year uh, where we were outside and there was like two guys that were late. And um, this was early, like way earlier on in the year. And I I assume this was just more of a cultural building thing, but basically uh, everyone else, I, at this time had just come back from having COVID. So I didn't have to do this. I was like in the the far lane or whatever. I kind of got to watch this from afar, but everyone else had to do a fifties run, a runner dive all out for uh, however many minutes that they were late for practice. And I think it ended up being like 15 or something. Um, and like everyone was just like dying, throwing up and <laughs> it was, uh, it was definitely something that I was like, I am really glad I'm not doing this right now. Um, but like, that's kind of like more of an isolated incident, but it's more like, like Aiden said, if, if you're late, then you know, like they know that you're like, you're flustered and you're like, Oh shoot. And, and they'll, they might like say something or, 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 like make a comment later on, but it, it will never be like uh, in your face, go do like a 1500 fly, you know? I've been a part of uh, diving and throwing up and sprinting on that pool deck before. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I bet there's a lot of people that would hear that and think, really? Their punishment is fifties? Like fifties <laughs> sprinting? But if you're actually going hard, <laughs> yeah, it's mm-hmm. really hard to do. Yeah, <laughs> Especially if you got people standing there telling you to be sprinting. Just yeah. look at shoot what Michael Andrew does on a daily basis and all that sprinting. <laughs> oh yeah. man. You know, I I'm curious to know from you guys what it's been like to walk into that pool, indoor pool at least, every day, and see a pool full of banners and be in a position where you're i mean what do you think about that do you is that added pressure is it inspiration um especially with where you guys are headed now and with the momentum headed in that direction is that something that you get excited about um or do you try not to think about it what is it like aiden no i mean um I think David Marsh kind of put it best for us. Like he, he came and talked to us. Um, I think it was like early last year, like middle of last year. He was basically saying like, uh, I don't know. He's basically saying that like we're laying the bricks for the future. And I think for me, like my, my vision of what the banners and everything is mean to me, is kind of shifted. Like when you're first getting there, it's like a freshman and everything's big. It's like, Dang, like I'm not that right now. I can tell you that much. Like I'm not, I'm not the one that's going out there and winning NCAA titles and everything. But the longer that I've been here, the more that it's turned into like what I'm aiming towards. And I know that I'm not going to see it because I have, you know, I mean, I probably should be done after this year, but I've got, I'm going to take my fifth year. I've got another year left. And, you know, reality is I'm not going to win. We're not going to win an NCAA title next year. Like it, it's just a little bit out of reach. So I, but it is nice to like finally, finally be able to see that like we are actually laying the groundwork and it's working. Like, um, that the banners are what we're shooting for. Like, we're we're going to put up more banners, and it's just a matter of time. It's just like, you know, I'm not going to see it. I mean, I'm not going to be on the team when I, you know, when it happens, but 
it is we're we're coming and we're going in that direction and, and it's nice yeah nate when you look ahead in your career what do you think about you know aiden's comment and i agree by the way as as much as support that takes time you know it takes time to get there and to win titles takes takes a lot of depth and a lot of depth at an elite level um and you have to build that and it starts with the work that you guys are doing now um what do you think about like the the team goals and aspirations nate kind of with your class and the class that i mean as you go into recruiting weekends in the fall what what kind of conversations are you going to be having with the potential future teammates of yours to help continue to build yeah um i would say like the general consensus around the attitude in my class is is somewhat similar to aiden's um and that like we know that we're laying the groundwork um uh for for you know national titles sec titles and, and what not but um like when it comes to recruiting um our, our i mean like you said like our our kind of pitch is that like we we know that the likelihood of us like our class seeing an NCAA title is pretty slim, um, but the likelihood of you guys seeing this uh, seeing this NCAA title when you're here is going to be exponentially better. Like we um, like the guys that we have coming in in the next couple of recruiting classes, those are the guys that are going to be like, okay, like we're going to get number one this year, you know. Um, and I mean, it's it's a long process to you know recruit these like really good guys out of high school to try and beat big teams like Cal and Texas and Florida. Like it's that's no easy task, um, and and we know that the coaches know that. Um, but to have the like recruit like and during recruiting week- weekends to have these guys buy in is what's the most important is because when they start believing and they want to come here, that's when like everything, you know, comes together. And that's when their sophomore, junior, senior years, that's when they're going to be hanging up the banners. Um, And so that's, that's kind of like the attitude that we bring, uh, bring forth to like Auburn is that, or in recruiting weekends is that we love Auburn and we want Auburn to succeed in the future so this is why we are going to put our 100% effort into these weekends to get these future champions here. And I think like on that point as well, like one thing that we have that is very like easy to see is progress. Like we went from, I think it was ninth my freshman year or it was eighth, like two years of being eighth and then last year being sixth with the DQ relay. So, you know, that's kind of looking a little bit more like fourth and then to second this year, like we're in a very clear upward trajectory and you know we want people that are going to be a part of that and that are going to keep that trajectory moving up um are there are there any things um that you guys have noticed auburn's a combined program and the women are at a different place in their (laughs) journey than you guys are right now but it's rare for there to be programs that train together who aren't often at the at a pretty similar level in terms of their their accomplishments and so i can only imagine that you know the the better that the men's team does the the better that helps um you know the women and their training and also their recruitment effort and i'm curious if there are some things some highlights aiden that you have seen from this women's program that's got you excited about the direction that they're moving yeah um i think one thing that like we are in different, we are, we're in a different place, I think, but um, they're like, they're in a very like important cultural building phase. And I think that they're doing a great job of that right now. And I think that, well, for one, I mean, like seeing people like Megan Lee, you know, go 51 and her fly and like, she had a crazy good SEC meet and, and she's shown some, some great progress over the last couple of years and and she's doing really well. And, um, seeing freshmen like Kyla Maloney and Ainsley Jones. And then, um, you know, there's a lot of like, there are a lot of pieces to the women's team that are like, that are coming and they're, they're young and they're developing. Um, and I think like, yeah, like training with them is, it's a nice, I love, I love training with the women. And I think like, 
it kind of gives you a different perspective on, on how they approach it. And, but, but they've got, you know, they're, they are a little, you know, they're in a different place, but they are, they're coming. They're, they, they're building their land bricks right now, just like we were, you know, a year ago. And, and um, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. I got some rapid fire questions for you guys to finish up. All right. All right. Nate, what's the hardest race in swimming? Uh, two back long course. I, I got to be a little biased here. Aiden, what's the hardest race in swimming? Two back long course. Aiden, Olympic gold or world record? Oh, world record. Nate? Oh, easily Olympic gold. Easily Olympic gold. All right. Uh, I'm going to open this to both of you guys at the same time. Five uh, multiple choice answer question. Who's the greatest Auburn alumni not named Rowdy Games? I'll give you Tim Cook, Apple CEO, Bo Jackson, Charles Barkley, the round mound to rebound, Jimmy Wales, the co-founder of Wikipedia, or Octavia Spencer, Oscar winning actor. B. Uh, Bo Jackson. Yeah, Bo Jackson for sure. I'm going to have to go Tim Cook. I'm going to have to go Tim Cook. Big Apple fan. <laughs> Nate, do you pee in the pool? I do. Everyone does. Aiden, stop, have you seen him do it? <laughs> have I seen him do it? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know or not, probably. Yeah. Oh, Aiden, what's something annoying that one of the coaches does that they should stop doing? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, oh boy, you're gonna give me trouble. Um. No, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Yeah, I probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Ryan always says uh, he always just says understand and know. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I want you guys to understand and know. I, I, <laughs> he's always saying, understand and know and, and comprehend just every time he was. Yeah. I don't know. Slightly redundant, Nate. What uh, what do you think is? Uh, one of the things that the coaches have stopped doing. Oh, um, all right. I, I, all right. Let me, let me say this to preface this. I like when he does this. I think it's funny, but Gideon refers to every single swimmer as killer. And it's like, it, it's, it's just, it's hilarious to me. I, I just think it's like the most kind of like, I've never heard anyone else like say that other than Gideon. I just think that's, I think that's funny. I think it's maybe even slightly a little like weird, but yeah. <laughs> Aiden, what's your least favorite Auburn cheer? Oh man. Bodiget has always been a weird one for me. I, don't oh, know. I hate Bodiget and I was really hoping you would say it. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, Nate, what is a set that when you do it, you know that you're ready to rock? Ooh, um, I would say 3050s max VO2. Uh, Aiden's gonna shoot me for this. Like it's a it's a hard set, but every single time that we do that set, I'm like, all right, like I'm I'm ready to rip it. Aiden, what is a set that you won't miss when you retire? 51 ones right off the bat. I know that one. Ones, yeah, it's uh the first 34 of them are like threshold. And then the last 16 are all all out max and it hurts really bad. It's long all long course. course too. Yeah. All long course. And what are they? Oh, so what are the threshold on and what are the max ones on? Uh threshold is on a descending interval. It's on 140 to 120, I think. Yeah, one like descend to one five. It's it's descend one to five, one forty to one twenty. And then all of the max is on like two minutes, which is like not necessarily fast, but you're expected to go like you're expected to go fast. So that's, it's painful. You come back next year, you're signing up for that. You remember that, right? I, I do that said, and I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. For <laughs> <laughs> it's the one thing that was keeping me from, uh, from doing it. But. Uh, Aiden, what's the best question a recruit or a prospect has ever asked you when visiting? Hmm. Or what do you think that they should ask? What's something that like, you know, everybody asks the same thing. What's what's one thing that you're like, oh yeah, that's, yeah. this this is important. This is something you should be asking. Um, I think, like, I think I, I can think of a couple. Number one, I would be like, what, like, why do you, why did you come here? Like, what made you commit here? Hmm. 
Um, and number two, like, where do you see the team in like four years or like, um, yeah, I, yeah. Those are the two. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nate crazed Bama fan and notorious tree poisoner Harvey Updike had two kids. What were their names? <laughs> They're still alive. What are their names? Is it, is it roll tide? Pretty close. Aiden, you got an answer? Oh, geez. Close. Oh, man. I, no, I don't, I don't know. This man named his kids Bear Bryant and Crimson Tide. Oh, oh my God. Wonderful. Allegedly, he bad. also wanted to name their third child Allie Bama, but got nixed, although he did have dogs named Bama and Nikki after Nick Saban. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nate. If you could sign an NIL deal with any brand, who would it be? Oh, um, it would be it would be Cetaphil lotion. I use that stuff <laughs> like nobody's business. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Every single day after practice, I'm putting it all over my body. I would save so much money. Oh man, how many times has somebody given you a Silence of the Lambs reference on that one? <laughs> Puts the lotion on. Put the lotion in the basket. Yeah, Aiden, uh, what same question to you. What NIL deal would you sign if you could? Um I might get in trouble for saying this because we have an arena deal. So I don't know if I can say Mizuno, but <laughs> <laughs> I might get in trouble for that one. I love Arena. I love Arena. Arena's awesome. Uh, but I like Mizunos. So there is something about the Mizuno suits, I'm not gonna lie. They've they've nailed the cut and have for years. All right, last one for you guys. Does Auburn do social kick? Oh yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Yeah, good. I I would not have it any other way, and I'm happy to hear it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, yeah. It's a pleasure to to watch the progress and and hear from you guys. Um, definitely rooting for you. Like I said, there's a lot of alums who've reached out and are are also rooting for you, cheering for your progress. So excited to see where that goes. Um, and I'm glad to hear that the mentality too is. Listen, it's, you know, that's, that's great that that happened uh, before, but you know, we're, we are what we are, we are who we are right now. And there's only, I remember, you know, my coach in college, David Marsh always used to say, get comfortable being uncomfortable and control the controllables, you know? And so um, that's all that you can do. And I'm excited for uh, where, where it's headed. Uh, have a hell of a time at NCAAs and uh, War Dam Eagle. War Dam Eagle. Eagle. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. Right do you have any? Do you have any? Real quick, do you have any funny stories of Brian before we go? <laughs> <laughs> I was explicitly told no old stories. Ah, but I will tell no. one old story that uh, I think I've told on the show before, but to an Auburn audience because I'm going to share this one to some Auburn folks. One of the big adjustments that you have to make, uh, and Ryan knows this story well because I've told it to Vlad and everybody too pretty recently, but. Hmm. One of the big adjustments you have to make in college is a uh, shopping for your own groceries, eating healthy if you weren't doing that in high school, and uh, you know making those decisions in a team setting. We're on a team trip. Uh, I think it was around Christmas training. Maybe it was before Christmas training, fall of my freshman year. We go to a Boston Market restaurant. Everybody goes through the line and gets you know whatever they get. I don't know. Does that restaurant still exist? I don't know. But it's like so. rotisserie chicken, green beans, mashed potatoes, stuff like that. So we go to this restaurant and uh, sitting down eating food and head coach comes, looks over my shoulder, David Marsh, and he says, puts his hand over my plate, circles it over my plate. He says, where, where's your vegetable? And I I have to admit, I didn't know that much about food. I thought potatoes were a vegetable. Apparently, they're not. They're not? I said, potatoes? <laughs> and he said, no, 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 no. See, what you have here is a plate of starch. Now, I just want you to know that you and Ryan are the only ones <laughs> in this room who don't have a vegetable. And I said, you know, being a, a freshman wanting to do everything right, I started to stand up. I said, David, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go back. I just got, I hadn't even started eating yet. I'll go back. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go get a vegetable. He goes, no, 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 no. I just wanted you to know that you <laughs> and I 
are the only ones. And believe me, he was saying this loud enough for the entire team. (laughs) (laughs) So I have, I have Ryan to thank for being such a great example to me from early on. (laughs) Uh, Then um, I was, I knew, I knew not to set my eating habits based on Ryan. The other one that I will tell to shame him is that uh, when I first moved uh, to Auburn, I remember there was a, uh, you know, it's the South. They like fried food. Mm-hmm. There were fried chicken tenders or finger restaurants, uh, whatever you want to call them. And there, the, there was like a pamphlet in my freshman, like folder materials that had like a list of all the restaurants in town. And it had a whole category for chicken tenders. <laughs> it was like, you know, breakfast, Italian, chicken tenders <laughs> and and believe me nobody appreciated guthrie's <laughs> as much as your head coach <laughs> who was known unilaterally for celebrating with a bucket of chicken <laughs> on that note i will do no further public shaming but <laughs> it's been fun hanging out with you guys, War Eagle. I hope to see you uh, sometime soon, maybe in the fall. But um, yeah. till next time. Thanks, for Cheers. Keep Definitely. On. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Social Kick. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you're enjoying Social Kick, tell your friends about it. And be sure to tell us what you liked by leaving a comment. And subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Social Kick. And you can find all of our content on our website.